I, it's, it's in my top three of seeds of all time. Um, I've, I've tried Durana, Patriot Clovers, all that, and deer eat that stuff, they love it too, but they don't eat it like they eat this stuff, man. I'm telling you, it's crazy. <music> What's up guys and welcome to the Handy Hunter. I am standing in an absolutely worn out food plot of air leaf clover. My deer absolutely destroyed this plot this season. They loved it all through the spring and into the midsummer. I'm about to show you some video uh, that's gonna prove the activity of the deer just eating this stuff like crazy. Air leaf clover now, because of what I've seen over the last two to three years of this, I, it's, it's in my top three of seeds of all time. Um, I've, I've tried Durana, Patriot Clovers, all that, and deer eat that stuff, they love it too, but they don't eat it like they eat this stuff, man. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And we're gonna talk about planting it and all this, but this is where it's at now. It's just a bunch of seed heads, and I'm getting free seed out of all this old dead head stuff now. And uh, man, this stuff was awesome, absolutely awesome. So anyway, we're gonna talk about some things. I'm gonna show you some videos, stay tuned. Let's get busy. So let's jump into some details about arrowleaf clover and then we'll talk about some planting tips. So first of all, arrowleaf clover is an annual, unlike its counterparts in the white clover families, which are perennials, an annual lives one season and then it completely dies. The good thing about arrowleaf is that it's a really heavy reseeder, so it will leave you a lot of seed in your seed bank for the following season. I've grown arrowleaf for several years and I've, I've gotten up to about three years off of one planting of arrowleaf before I have to replant again. It's also very nutritious for deer with protein reaching up to nearly 20% and digestible dry matter at around 80%. So here's a few details to keep in mind before planting arrowleaf clover. Uh, it does best in a soil pH range from 5.8 to 6.5, so keep that in mind as you select your best plot. It grows great all across the south. All the southern states are a good choice. Uh, I'm in Georgia and it loves the Georgia soil. So Georgia is a great place for uh, growing arrow leaf. The best time to plant is between September and November. I typically plant arrow leaf with my fall mix in mid-September and it does really well um, through the hunting season, although it really kicks in in the spring. I typically plant at a rate of 10 pounds per acre 
And I usually combine that with a 50 pound bag of oats. I usually don't include anything else in it because I don't want to crowd out the clover as it's coming up in the spring. And that rate seems to work great for the oats and for the arrow leaf. Now, one of the things that we, we have to get right or we're going to waste our money is the depth of planting. Uh, it typically likes to be planted between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch, and that can be a little challenging at times. So we're going to talk about that next. You must inoculate it with the right bacteria uh, to get it off to the right start, and we're going to talk about that as well. And you must avoid shady areas because it does not like shade. So keep that in mind as you pick your plot. So there are several varieties of arrow leaf clover, and I have experience with two, both Apache and Yuchi, and I've had great success with both of these varieties. However, I do believe that Apache is an improved variety of arrow leaf and is less susceptible to diseases. Um, I also like Apache because it comes pre-coated with fungicide and inoculate, which makes it really convenient, um, and it comes in the bag that way. So the first planting tip I have for you is to always inoculate your seed uh, before planting. Now this doesn't matter what variety you're using or whether or not it's pre-coated with inoculant. I just mentioned that Apache comes pre-coated with inoculant, but I will still put fresh inoculant on the seed before planting because keep in mind that inoculant is live bacteria so and it's very susceptible to heat. So you don't know where that bag of seed has been. It, I've never seen an air-conditioned warehouse. It could have been in a hot warehouse for months. It could have been in the back of a hot truck and it could have damaged the bacteria. Bacteria, so it's always a good insurance policy to put a $10 bag of Endure, which is specifically for arrow leaf clover, right on the seed right before you plant. And I've always had great success with this. Planting tip number two is going to help you maximize the spreading of your clover seed. I always try to spread clover seed alone. I do not like including it in other mixes such as my fall mix because what typically happens is since clover clover seed is so tiny it generally sifts straight to the bottom of your hopper and it's the first to go out and it's the first to be depleted before you get around all of your food plot. So I like to create bulk in my hopper by adding either lime or fertilizer with my seed because this allows me to get around my entire food plot with an even coat of seed everywhere. So there is a couple of caveats to doing this though because you don't want to damage your seed because keep in mind you have live bacteria inoculant on your seed and you don't want to leave it mixed with fertilizer or lime for very long so that it sweats together and damages or kills the, ba the bacteria. Now I do it this way every year. I'm doing it again this year and I've done it for many years with great success so I know this works I just mix it right before I get on the tractor to spread it and I do not leave it for very long at all so one final thought and option for you guys that have food plots that you have a difficult time getting super smooth for optimal clover planting one strategy that I've employed in the past that works really well is to spread half of your seed and then cover it and then come back and spread the other half of your seed on top and just let the rain wash that in and you'll get a nice even germination across your food plot if your food plots are a little rough. Planning tip number three is to get your food plots as smooth as possible. This is extremely important to getting a very even germination across all of your food plot. Now, one of the things that you want to try to accomplish is to knock down the peaks and fill in the valleys and get it as flat as possible so that all of your seed is laying on the same depth before you go to cover it. You'll want to lightly drag, and I mean lightly drag, over the top of clover seed. It is important to not cover it too deeply and to get between that quarter inch and half inch of depth for optimal germination. Before I built my own custom drag, I used to use a chain link fence and it worked really well to perfectly cover clover seed. Keep in mind that planting too deep is the number one reason for failure of a clover plot, so don't plant it too deep. That concludes today's video. I hope you found this information helpful. Please leave me questions and comments. Would love to hear from you guys and good luck with those clover plots.